everybody, welcome back to Bad Weather Terrible. Today we have a new Pokemon Blaze Aton featuring the new Charizard from Pokemon Go set with the Burn Brightly ability, allowing you to double the amount of fire energy you have been playing. So we're playing this card with our Sending Scorch from Sudden Sheep with the 100 foot flames attack, allowing you to discard the top card of our opponent's deck for each fire energy attached to this Pokemon. But this ability does not stack, that means if you have more than one Charizard in play, you can't actually discard more than two cards from your opponent's deck with your Sending Scorch. We're also playing our Magma Basin and Greninja, the obvious complement to a fire deck, plus that two copy of experience share to help our Sending Scorch collect extra energies for even more discards. For the switch, we have one Bird Keeper and one Sunny Cast form. For the setup, we have three Baby Pass, one Level Ball, four Quick Ball, two Ultra Ball, and two Incense. For our draw support, we have three Research, two Marnies, one Bruno, and one Xenia's Resolve. We can also draw with Greninja and our three copies of Entei, doing Fleet Footed for the extra one card into your hand. It is also our main attacker, helping us collect prizes for the win. So we can either win by collecting all of our prizes by using Entei for the Turbo Attack, which is only going to cost one energy once you have your Charizard out in the game, or we can mill our opponent's deck at the last minute and force them to deck out with our Senti Scorch. So the way we are playing this card is to keep it at the bench every single single turn and attach at least two energies with our basin and from our hand, slowly building up our mill power and forcing our opponent to deal with this secondary one prize threat. So if they do a boss on our Sensei Scorch, we have our NT to attack on the next turn to collect extra prizes with Burning Rondo. We're also playing two copies of our Sizzly Pete and Sensei Scorch plus that one rod to recycle those cards and that at least guarantees us one strike with our 100 foot flames at the very last second, discarding double the amount of cards for each fire energy. Finally, we have three rare candies for the stage 2 evolution, one boss order and two right hand for the extra support, 12 basic fire energy and four magma base. You can also add a lower mobile into your deck to force your opponent to draw extra cards into their hand just before playing your 100 foot flames. So that's all for the deck list and if you guys are in need of any specific cards or packs for your own PTCG account, feel free to contact our sponsor from xtrainer 90 team for the best price in Pokemon TCG online codes. You can contact them through the links in the description below or you can click on the top right corner of this video. They even got complete personal decks you could purchase, full art, secret rare, gold cards to add to your collection, and packs from any expansion in format. Brilliant Stars, Astro Radiance, Rebel Clash, you name it and now let's go for a gameplay okay let's go for our first game versus black qrm there's gonna be a qrm v max by the way a qrm v max for lost abyss which is pretty cool um it has a radical ability allowing you to discard the top card of your deck if it's a water energy kind of kind of the same as my cargo gx if it's a water energy you get to attach it to any one of your pokemon um if it's not an energy obviously just discard it and it actually does more damage for each water energy you discard from this Pokemon. Um, I think you get to discard water energy. I think it only works for water energy that you discard. And you get to discard it from any of your Pokemon. Kind of the same as your Cypurge for Mewtwo V-Star. So let's focus on this game. We're playing, we playing against Arceus V-Star with Rayquaza. We have our Entei out in front. We have our Charmander already on the bench. We just need our Rare Candy Evolution. Um, it's not really that pressing to get your Sizzly Pete out that early. So the main strategy of this game is to play your 100 foot flames at the very last minute. So you don't really need to get it out that early, but if you do, you get to base in for more energies. You get to collect from the get-go, which kind of is better. So if you are able to, um, you know, bench that fast, make sure you do it. If you can't, then it's okay, because we don't actually need it until later. And if you don't give off that you are playing a, a mill deck, because if you have a Sizzlipede on your bench with a Charmander from Pokemon Go, we actually have one copy from the Vivid Voltage. So Charmander from Vivid Voltage is helping us masking this deck a little bit. But if they know what strategy we are playing, if they know that we are trying to mill them to death, that we have that option to win the game, they may actually, you know, restrict the amount of cards that they draw from the deck. They may be a bit more conservative and careful with what cards they are drawing out from the deck and how many cards left they have inside the deck because they want to be, um, you know, they want to be keeping as many as they can so that they can avoid a, a death by, you know, Senti Scorch, basically. A death by 100 foot flames. So we got it early, that's great. We even got our Charmeleon, but we couldn't do the attack just yet. Um, so I was actually, uh, you know, I was deciding whether to attach to the Sizzlipede or the Entei, but decided on the Entei just because we have an experience share already. So all we need to do is evolve the Charizard, and we actually can attach every single turn from our hand, not just discard with Greninja and attach with Magma Basin. We also get to attach from our hand uh, to our Senti Scorch which is the main thing we need to be concerned about. So from here on, from here on out, just keep on attaching to your Sizzlipede until your Entei gets knocked out. 
because Entei only requires one energy with your Charizard in the game for the Burning Rondo attack. One energy is enough thanks to Burn Brightly. And they actually bossed our Charmeleon, which is horrible. Now we need our Rare Candy to evolve the second one because we only have that one Charmeleon. We do have a Rod though, but I'm not sure if this build has one because this is one of the earliest, uh, earlier version. So I have a lot of different version of this deck, but you know, not too different from the original strategy. So the main combo is obviously Charizard, Sandy Scorch, Entei, Magma Basin, and you know, all the regular cards like Raihan, Experience Share, you can't go without those cards. Um, but you know, the number of copies, the ratio, how many energies we have inside the deck is a little bit different uh, from game to game. Throughout this video, it's a little bit different. We may have a rod, we may not, we may not have a rod for each game. We may have a bird keeper, we may not. Some actually has an escape rope. But eventually we, you know, we what do you call that? We decided on cast form. We circled back to cast form just because it's so good. Uh, it's a free retreat Pokemon if they don't knock it out, which they're probably gonna either knock out your Sensei Scorch or your Entei anyways. Entei for the two prize, Sensei Scorch for the mill disruption uh, to deny you the mill. So whichever they knock out, cast form is safe unless if they do an Avery, which you're probably gonna be forced to discard your cast form just because you want to be keeping your Charizard and Sensei Scorch on the bench and maybe your Greninja as well. So if you can keep your cast form, if it's late stage in the game, it's better to just do that because we don't need Greninja anymore. And cast form actually helps you attach extra three copies of energy, extra three energies um, at the last second. So if you have, for example, 10 cards left on your opponent's deck, in your opponent's deck, if they have like 11 cards left or something like that, uh, and you have an experience share attached to your Senti Scorch and they knock out your Entei, you have already two you, you have, for example, already two, two energies attached to your Senti Scorch, then you can experience share for one. Um, Magma Basin for one with Cast Form in the active spot, and then attach one from your hand. You get to retreat with Cast Form and do a 10 discard. You may even play a Raihan for the extra one energy. So that's the power of this deck. Raihan is actually quite important. That's why we're playing two copies, and for some reason, if you play a lot of research, you end up discarding the Raihan with research. So that's why I prefer to not have that many copies, but three is kind of essential though. So eventually we decided back on three copies of research, but we do have more, you know, other cards to basically shuffle them back into the deck, like Marnie, Shauna. Uh, we don't have a Shauna, my bad. We have a Bruno. Um, not sure what else we have, I think a Schoolgirl. I'm not really too sure now, but uh, we have a Zinnia, my bad. So we have a lot of ways to discard our energies. We have a, well, do we have a Zinnia? I'm not too sure now. Um, just look at the description. Sorry guys, I'm not too familiar with the specific support cards we have. Uh, if you guys want to check out the list, just look at the description or, you know, back to the deck review, just rewind back early in the video. Okay. Um, just forgot about this uh, specifics, that's all. Let's just focus on Rayquaza now. They actually knocked out our V-card early. They got 12 cards left though. They got 12 cards left in the deck, three prize cards remaining. So I don't think it would be wise for us to bench a Entei right now, but we may be lucky for them to draw even more cards just, just so they can get their Rose or something like that to knock out the Entei because they don't actually have enough energies to knock it out. Um, they need their switch card and the evolution because Rayquaza, the basic, doesn't do enough damage for a V knockout. So we actually did a research. That means we are planning on doing our Senti Scorch for the, for the win. Um, it is a bit risky because I don't think we have a rod or a second copy of the Sizzlypeed for this game. Um, I think we're doing it right now. So we're just gonna quick ball to see if we have a Sizzlypeed. I'm not too sure though. I don't think we have. We actually have another Entei. So I think the best bet is just to attack with the Entei and then stay on the bench with our Sandy Scorch because we can't even do enough discard. If they play a Marnie on the next turn, that would be horrible. So we have no idea if they have that card. A Marnie or 
uh, Roxanne, but Roxanne doesn't work though because we have six prizes remaining. We're not drawing any prizes for this game. Uh, so this game is a bit different just because we have zero prizes drawn. Uh, the only way we can win is with the second option, which, uh, you know, 100 roof flames. If we don't do Sandy Scorch, we're not able to win this game. Okay, we decided to attack with Cast Form at some point in the game. We don't actually have a Charizard. So this is actually quite tricky. We need to Raihan for the evolution. We have a Rare Candy in our hand, but if we don't do a Raihan on the next turn, if they do a Marnie, we're completely screwed because they, they're going to put all those cards back at the bottom and they have essentially at least 15 cards left in the deck and that's virtually impossible to discard with even a Raihan and an extra energy. So 15 is not that easy because, you know, Cast Form is dead if they knock it out. If they boss, they're probably going to boss the Sandy Scorch anyways. So... Do they have a boss that's basically boss or Marnie? That is basically the determining factor of the game. <laughs> Marnie is horrible, but good thing about Rayquaza is that if you're playing against Rayquaza, good thing for you is that they actually have to discard their hand every single turn. Azure Pulse doesn't let them keep those cards. If they have boss in their hand, they have to discard it in order to draw those switch cards, in order to draw the things that they need like rose or fire energy anything that they need they don't really need fire though because they got trinity nova to get those out so they may not be using that azura pulse ability at all instead they may be playing more supporter cards i don't know it's a useful ability to use at times though so it's an extra option if you uh, you know if you get it and they actually did not play a supporter card i don't think they played any supporter cards on that turn so we Raihan for our Rare Candy Evolution, got an extra energy from our hand, and we actually get to do 14 discards with that Burn Brightly ability, the new Pokemon Go Charizard, supporting Sandy Scorch from Sword and Shield, doing a full nil to the death. And we won against Rayquaza Arceus, look at that. With Sandy Scorch, guys. Sandy Scorch finally working in the standard format. Thanks to Charizard's Burn Brightly. <laughs> I love this deck so much. I tried with Zoroark, it doesn't work that well. I tried a lot of ways to make Sandy Scorch work. Eventually, I decided that, you know what, we need an attacker. There's, there's just no way we can make this a full mill deck. It's impossible to make it a full mill deck just because you need a stage 2 support and a stage 1 attacker. That means you need your rod to be able to do 100 foot mills, uh, 100 foot flames, my bad. 100 foot flames for at least six times in a game and to do that it is it demands a lot actually you need to evolve every single turn if they boss your charizard you need to evolve that back you need to rot it back so it's like i don't know it's kind of impossible to do that just because uh, if you play a stage two support it's just better it's just better to do kind of like our magnet zone deck that we you know if you saw our magnet zone deck on our last video it's kind of the same thing you cannot afford to play a stage 2 with a VMAX or an evolution. You know, a VMAX is okay just because you can actually play like two or three copies of the attacker. But if you are playing a one price attacker, you need a solid 4-4 four, four line. You not only need a solid 4-4 four, four line, you also need your rods, Clara, to recycle them, to retrieve them back. So you need a lot of supports just for that stage 1 to work, just to get that system running. You also need your stage 2 support and you don't actually have the space for your uh, draw support, your other cards, you know, your item, uh, setup cards, basic summon, energies, like we need a lot of energies for this deck as well. So that's why it doesn't actually work that well in terms of making it uh, fully mill themed. It's impossible to make it uh, a decking, we can't make it a devour theme. So Duran is a devour theme deck, um, I don't know if it's called that, but it's a mill deck, right? We can't make it a mill deck alone, unfortunately. So we have our Entei to help us buy extra few turns and threaten our opponent. If they don't kill the Entei, we got our Sensei Scorch on the bench to do a big discard. We even got our Rod and we can actually play 100 foot flames at least three times if they don't boss it at all. If they don't do a boss a single a single time on the Sensei Scorch, if they try to kill the Entei's on our bench, or if they try to kill the Charizard, we got another Charizard to spare. Um, 
So if they do something else, we actually got a clean three strikes with our 100 foot flames doing at least 10 discards for each strike, discarding 30 cards from the deck. And by that time, they would actually be dead because to counter Entei, Entei has a lot of HP. They need to draw a lot of cards. They need to draw enough to be able to attack to do enough damage to kill Entei. If they play Ice Rider though, I don't think they have a high chance of winning just because Ice Rider is not just a water type. It is also uh, a very, you know, consistent deck. It's very, it requires very few cards. You don't need a lot of things. You just need your Drizzile. If you get your level ball, you can draw your Drizzile and then your Evolution, Melanie, and that's it. You don't need to draw that many. You don't need to use a Research. You don't need to use a Rare Candy. You don't need to do anything. You just need to get Drizzile, Incense, Ice Rider VMAX, Melanie, Water Energy, Capacious Bucket, and that's like a total of 10, 10 cards probably. And then after that, you just need to keep on playing Melanie, right? But they may be drawing too many cards though. They may be required to draw out those, uh, you know, evolutions just to search for their uh, Melanie and the right cards that they need to keep their system running. Because if they don't play Melanie, they cannot attack every single turn. Uh, they have Ride of the High King though. Ride of the High King can actually do a knockout just because we're playing Fire type. So Ride of the High King actually means they don't need a Melanie. So no need for drawing cards means Ice Rider not only stays alive for long, uh, if they just need to bench another one, right? It's not that difficult. It stays alive for a long time just because we need two strikes to kill it with our Entei. Um, and also they got Shady for boss. So we don't really, I don't think we stand a good chance against Ice. It's so fast and it's so, what do you call that? It's um, conservative in terms of the cards that it requires. It doesn't need a lot. It only needs two energies. You just need to evolve choice belt and that's it. You don't even need a choice belt against our Entei. Okay, right now we're up against Typhlosion. Typhlosion V-Star, and it was actually a big mistake attaching the energy to our Entei with the Basin, because they actually got uh, the Quick Shoot, and now they get to do Hollow Missile, I think. No, it's not Hollow Missile. Hollow Bind, Hollow something. Hollow Flame, uh, onto the Charizard 3 damage counters. It would have been the same thing though, because they would have targeted the Entei and then do their star, the V-Star attack to kill it. But they actually get to save it now. They get to save the V-Star attack for the next turn, because there's only one energy attack. They get to do a boss on the Charizard and then V-Star knock it out. Because um, we actually did a Basin on it. Oh my god, we did it again. I mean, we should not be doing that. I don't know why I did that. I suppose we couldn't attack with anything else, that's the reason. We have no Sandy Scorch on the bench, we can't do anything else but attack with Charizard. So I suppose we have no choice but to base in for the energy. It's a bit risky though. We should be attaching from our hand and ignoring the base in. I suppose I was expecting them to do a, a quick shoot on the Charizard and then the V-Star attack on the active and then Hollow Flame on the Charizard to knock it out because Charizard has very low HP. Hollow Flame is enough to kill it, but they actually need to do the V-Star attack on the Charizard because the second one can't actually get charged up that easily. They don't have enough energy supports for the second copy. So if they don't Shadow Rider for the energy right now, they, got, they don't have enough energies. If they don't play Experience Share Raihan, the second V-Star is going to be a bit difficult to charge up. So that means they can do the V-Star to kill us, but they can't use Hollow Flame to kill us. So we should definitely have been a bit more careful with the Basin just now, but they have the three damage counters, they have the Inteleon. I don't think we can survive that. Like, we are already down to eight damage counters. If we didn't do the Basin, we would have six damage counters passing the turn, and then eight with their Inteleon on the next turn. They just need to do it like, later right a bit later just for inteleon to get enough damage counters in the game so we got six draw with zinnia that's the good thing about zinnia is that if you get it late you're you have a high chance of getting it you have a high chance of drawing a lot of cards into your hand that's why i love zinnia sometimes not all the time because if you get it too early it's just it just sucks 
Like you need everything in your hand early in the game. You cannot afford to discard anything. Like your supporter cards, your um, setup cards, your VIP pass, your incense, your rare candy. Everything is essential. Nothing can be discarded. It is necessary that you don't discard anything. And Zinnia forces you to discard. If you don't draw, you may just lose the game. If you discard, it's gonna cost you a lot later. So whatever you do, you're kind of screwed though. If you get that Zinnia too early. Unless if they bench like a lot from the get go. If they play like a Mew Max with a lot of VIP passes, if they get a lot of Genesex early in the game, and then you get a Zinnia on your second, on your first turn going second, or on your second turn, second turn going first, it's still okay, I suppose. Because at least you get to draw six cards in your hand to counter that discard. We could actually do our um, rare candy. Of, oh, we already have a Charizard, my bad. So we already have a Charizard on the bench, so we don't need to do our Ultra Ball rare candy just now. We just need to do uh, the Charmeleon and then Ultra Ball discard the two rare candies to get our stage two. So we're drawing prizes and forcing them to kill our Entei, trying to win the game by drawing prizes, while at the same time thinking about Senti Scorch because we actually have those two options and juggling be between those two um, is actually pretty fun to play because if you you know, if you reach a point in the game where you're unable to win by drawing all of your prizes, you can switch immediately to your Senti Scorch to deck them out. And you can still stand a chance to win the game. You know, you still have a chance at winning. If you lose too many of your Senti Scorch, if you don't have enough energy on your Senti Scorch, you can still win the game by drawing your prizes. So we actually have two options, which is pretty interesting. And I love this combo. I just love this deck right now. Because we get to do so many things. We get to force our opponent to deal with either the Senti Scorch or the Entei. If they deal with the Entei, they're going to have to be forced to draw out enough cards to do enough damage to kill Entei, to kill enough Enteis to win the game. If they deal with the Senti Scorch, they're going to be forced to deal with Entei, right? If they knock out this, if they kill our Senti Scorch, then we get to attack more times with Entei and we get to draw our prizes. Whereas they only get to draw one prize for a Sensei Scorch knockout. So there we go. The threat is real. And we are getting an extra copy of energy right now with our Basin. With that experience share, we get to rake in three extra energies on the next turn. We have to bench the cast form right now though. So benching the cast form allows us to uh, allows us to do the basin on the next turn as well. And Basin, Experience Share, Attach 1 from the hand, that's extra 3 energies, that's why we play a rod to put the energies back, because we want to be attaching from our hand as well. So extra 3 from the deck, what, sorry, from our hand, from, this, from the discard pile and from the Experience Share, means we get to discard 12 cards from the top deck on their next turn, if they don't deal with the Senti Scorch. They haven't used their V-Star attack yet. Which is a big surprise. You would have think they got it by now, right? No V Star attack. I have no idea why. I think they're saving it for like the very, very final hour, but it's already the final hour. Like, if they. I don't think they can kill the Entei though, so we can't actually afford to play. Um. The experience share. experience share doesn't work for this game just because they're doing a two-hit knockout strategy and they may actually knock out the Senti Scorch at the same time as killing... They did a research though. Oh my god, it's already the end. Um, they may kill this uh, Entei with the Senti Scorch simultaneously and that actually denies us from using 100 foot flames after that because they got Inteleon for the quick shoot, they got the hollow flames for extra damage counters on the bench if they quick shoot our Senti Scorch and uh, place extra 3 damage counter with Hollow Flames, that means they got 5 damage counters every turn. And 2 strikes, 2 turns is all they need to kill both uh, the Senti Scorch and the active. I keep saying Senti Scorch, like, I've repeated that word for too many times now. So all we need is to retreat 
and we actually took two damage counter thank god it has 230 so i forgot to check that we only have 30 hp remaining and they actually have a set uh, a old cemetery in play so we had to take two damage counter but we haven't uh, we're not dead yet and we get to retreat with our burn brightly discarding only two energy for the three energy retreat cost doing our 100 foot flames to discard the remaining five cards of our opponent's deck for the win we won against shadow rider and hisuian typhlosion v star pretty cool astro radiance deck with our Pokemon Pokemon Go expansion. Charizard Go. I love this combo. Charizard is like the most radical ability ever. Jungle Totem is back for fire types. I mean, that is crazy. Jungle Totem for fire types. Um, Welder for grass type is not a big thing because it only draws you two cards now. I mean, Gardenia is useless. And we used to have Oriko Rio for Sun and Moon. Like, we have so many things though. We have Viridian Forest, we have Giant Hearth, we have Oriko Rio to draw energy to search our deck for two basic energy, put it into our hand, and we get to scoop it up and we get to recycle that ability. But I don't think we have a scoop up net for Sun and Moon. We only have a super scoop up. Super scoop up and scoop up cyclone is for X and Y though. So only super scoop up for the item uh, retrieval. That means we only get to flip a coin if we want to recycle the ability. But Oriko Rio is quite powerful though. You get to place it onto your bench um, and maybe play a, you know, Giovanni's Exile and then Rescue Carrier or something like that to recycle the ability. But Giovanni's Exile is a supporter card though. So, I don't know. No scoop up that actually means you're forced to flip the coin and I don't like flipping coins. Super scoop up, I mean that's just ridiculous. I don't think people play that in standard. I don't know. I'm not really that uh, frequent, I'm not a frequent player when Sun and Moon was out. I'm a frequent player for the expanded format, not for the standard format. Um, I actually really hated the standard format when I first played this game because it's crazy tight and it doesn't allow you to play all of those crazy combos like in Expanded. Um, you get to play Silent Lab in Expanded, that's crazy for Shadinja. I mean, that's insane, right? You get to play Welder as well. So when I started playing the game, it was actually Sun and Moon. Um, I started when it was black and white actually, and then stopped for a few years, a good 10 years I would say. And, you know, did my studies and did everything, um, you know, uh, university degree and stuff like that. And then finally, uh, I decided to, you know, come back to Pokemon and make a business out of this game. And realize that I had a lot to learn. A lot still to learn, even now. Okay, we got... Our Charmeleon, uh, we're not able to attack unfortunately, and we got no Menifee on a bench, so we better be, be benching one soon. They got Urshifu in the game, I think they're playing Arceus as well. Trinity Nova with GMAX uh, Rabiflow. GMAX Rabiflow is no more though. Like Menifee. That one Menifee destroys it completely. Okay, we're gonna do our Charizard burn brightly. And now we don't need an extra energy. So it's always better to draw that one card after doing the research. Because now we don't get to bench a Menifee. I think I was a bit uh, I was a bit too rash in benching that Sizzlypede. I forgot they were playing a uh, Urshifu deck. That means if they do a Rapid Flow on both the Senti Scorch and the Sizzlypede on the next turn with a Pierre's and a Switch with a Starbirth, they can use Starbirth for a Switch card and the double turbo, uh, the double, the Rapid Strike energy, and then Rapid Flow to kill both the Centipedes. And then we got no mill we got no mill cards on the bench. They did a boss though. Okay. We only need one energy, so that was a bit silly. We just need one energy. 
I have no idea why they did that. They should be bossing the Charizard. Like, I have no idea why people don't deal with the Charizard. Charizard is a beast. If you kill the Charizard, then Senti Scorch is not doing that much discards, right? And then you need two energies to attack with Entei. You need like you need to focus on Entei to attack. And you need to focus on Senti Scorch. You need to focus on bringing out a, a second stage too, reviving your Charizard, which is a big deal. But nobody does that though. I have no idea why. You should be bossing, you should be dealing with the Charizard. <laughs> like. So best practice for this game is to bench one Charizard. Uh, evolve on Charizard and at the same time bench a Charmander. Prepare for your next one just in case, you know, one gets knocked out. So for this game, we were a bit careless. We were a bit reckless, so to speak. Just because we only have one Charizard in the game, which is not safe. Because it's just better to have a second copy. So ideally, you would be having two copies inside the deck. But if you have one prize, it's better to just focus on drawing it out from the prize with your Entei because if you don't get your second Charizard they may just boss knock it out and you can't actually do enough discards with your Senti Scorch so you need Senti Scorch you need Charizard you need both of them and we're only playing two copies of each two copies of Charmander Charizard two copies of Sizzlipede Senti Scorch which is a bit um, you know a bit what do you call it precarious a bit um, loose but it's okay um, as long as you play more than one copy, I think it's okay. <laughs> I would love to play like three copies of the Charizard and a solid 4-4 four, four line for Senti Scorch, but it just doesn't allow for that. You don't have enough draw support, you just can't make it that way. You, If you have enough draw support, you won't have enough energies. We need at least 10. 10 is like the minimum amount. I think 11 is the one that works. 12. I think we actually have 12 energies for this deck. Yep, we have 12. So 12 is ideal. 11 is the very the bare minimum. And 10, I, th I don't think 10 works. I tried 10, it just doesn't work. 11 energies is the bare minimum. Just because the standard deck now has a lot of energies. People play a lot of energies in their deck. Um, especially with Shadow Rider. Uh, Blissey, if they have special energy in their deck, they're more likely to get it out into their hand faster than you. And if you don't get your energy, you can't draw with Greninja, you can't draw, you can't do anything, you're stuck. So Greninja and Entei are both rule box Pokemon, so that means if they play Path to the Peak, you can't use your ability, but we do have our stadium cards, we do have four copies of Mega Basin to, uh, you know, unlock that, unlock that trap the path to the peak trap so they have 13 cards left in the deck important to know that 13 cards left when are we gonna play our senti scorch they actually get to do rapid flow now though so rapid flow is gonna kill the senti scorch on the bench unfortunately um if we retreat we only got like four discards this turn so i have no idea if we should be retreating um i don't think we can collect all the prize for the win Oh, we have a Menifee already. We actually have a Menifee. Uh, I did not see that. My bad. So they need a boss. They can't do a Rapid Flow to kill our bench. Because we finally got the Menifee out. Somehow. I I wasn't focusing on the game. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> at one point, they probably killed the Sizzlypede. Oh, the other Sense Scorch. I think they bossed the other Sense Scorch. So we actually had five full bench. We had a full bench just now. And they did not use a rapid flow. I don't know why they did that. They should be using a rapid flow to kill both the Senti Scorch. But they just decided not to. I think they were, you know, they were a bit. I don't think they are too familiar with that card, or maybe they are just underestimating its power. Because it can do a lot. So we're trying to draw our prizes as well. Threatening them that we can actually do a, uh, you know, a big VMAX knockout with our Entei. We actually got another Entei in our hand. So if they don't deal with the Entei, we can actually collect all the remaining three prizes much easily. 
They need like two more strikes. Oh, they need two more strikes. Three more strikes. Two strikes to deal with the Entei. Uh, one strike to deal with any other card for the remaining three prize. So I don't think they can kill Entei with one hit. That's the good thing about Entei, but if they play water types or if they play like Zashin V, high damage output, uh, high damage attackers, even a Rampardos is enough to kill your Entei. So we finally did our 100 foot flames for the win. Killing a Oshifu deck. They drew too many cards into their hand. They, I don't think they were expecting that. Because they should be doing rapid flow, but they did not. Maybe they're focusing on the Entei too much. They're trying to kill the Entei. So it's kind of diversion, right? If you if your opponent is too focused on Entei, they lost sight of Senti Scorch, you get to use their blind spot to attack them. Whereas if they lose sight of Entei, you get to use that to attack, do a lot of damage every single turn, and you get extra strikes for each copy. Because they need to keep on bossing your Senti Scorch. We got that one rod to recycle it as well. So we can actually bench it three times. Possibly, if we don't prize any. Okay, VIB pass. Should we get a Greninja? I don't think we need it because we are playing. We have enough support cards for this deck. So we're just gonna ignore the Greninja for now. And we actually need to attach the energy as well. So it's always better to decide later. Do your draw first. Fleet food first, then only play your VIP pass. Because if you fleet food for an energy, then you can. Well, if you play the VIP pass first. Uh, before doing the fleet foot, you may be drawing different cards though because you have to shuffle your deck But if you do it, if you fleet foot first and get an energy Then you can actually VIP for a Greninja to discard a second energy Because if you have already two energy in your hand, might as well just draw more cards with Greninja, right? Right now we're up against Dialga, sorry, <laughs> Darkrai Darkrai V-Star which is a really good matchup for us just because they are, you know, they are drawing a lot of cards from the deck They are doing a turbo effect and any turbo effect requires them to play a lot of their item cards a lot of their tracking shoes cards like that uh, uh, you know research to draw a lot of cards from the deck to discard their energies to basically run through their deck until they have very few cards left and that is when senti scorch is going to come in and do the big mail for the win so never underestimate senti scorch there is a lot of decks that are turbo now and this deck is actually doing really well. We got 30 plus wins out of 40, 40 plus games that we played. So it's actually pretty good. Above average, definitely. Okay, we're gonna do our Senti Scorch, uh, sorry, our Greninja for an extra card. We can actually attack already, thanks to Charizard. So we don't need that energy. Let's just draw. Okay, we need to focus on cutting down their energies. Doing a knockout actually uh, forces them to reattach those energies. If we kill the Moltres um, later on in the game, or a Darkrai V-Star, they are forced to search their deck for more energies to kill our Entei with one hit. They don't need a lot though, they just need like 5, I think. Uh, 5 or 6, I think 6 or 7. 6 or 7 with a Choice Belt. Six, six energy, my bad. So six darkness energy attached to all of their Pokemon with the choice belt. Um, it's not a big demand. But if they, you know, if they take too long to attach those cards, if they, um, what do you call that? Discard too many things from their deck. If they draw too many cards out just to attach those six, co six copies, they may not be able to survive this game. They did their Star Abyss. They searched for a Dark Patch and an Ultra Ball. So discarding the energy, getting the Greninja out. And here comes another discard. I bet they have a Clara. Clara for Moltres.
training cord training cord is actually helping us as well because we get to attach from our hand now we get to do basin and attach from the hand but we don't have a basin in our hand so no basin means we can't actually do the extra energy attachment unless if we do a bird keeper so bird keeper cast form is the perfect combo because if you have a bird keeper in your hand that you don't need to use that you're not required that is unnecessary for the whole game that is completely useless might as well just play it to draw cards into your hand and then cast form allows you to reverse the switch effect so cast form is really cool it's a fire type that means you get to attack with it as well you get to do basin for cast form but the main reason is there is for senti scores to do to attach more energies to collect more energies with basin right after the experience share and then you get to retreat attach from your hand raihan to you know discard an additional four energies sorry additional four cards from your opponent's deck Additional 8 cards, my bad. Uh, have, you get to add 4 energies to discard an additional 8 cards from the top deck. Here comes the second Dark Cry. They got a Choice Belt. So they got already 5 energies in the game. 180 damage. Uh, they don't need that many though because they know they're gonna get knocked out on the next turn so might as well just do a 2 hit knockout strategy prepare for the next jar cry 210 damage they need three more energies for an NT knockout later on we should be retreating with the sensi scorch oh we actually put forth a mana fee interesting so are we going to play a Marnie or a Research? Marnie actually doesn't work quite well for this deck because we don't want to be saving our opponent's hand. But just because we can't afford to discard that many times, if we play too many Research, we're going to be forced to discard like our Stage 2 card, our Senti Scorch, and we only have that one rod to recycle them. Like, we can't actually afford to, to discard too many of our resources. Okay, let's get another Entei. They got 4 prize remaining and 24 cards left in the deck. So I don't think it's that easy for us to draw all the prize cards to win. But they have like 2 injured Pokemon in play. We just need like 4 more strikes. They need only 3 strikes I would say. Because they got their free knockout against Entei. We already benched it. So we need 4 strikes. They need 3 strikes. We need a boss. They don't need a boss. They can win much easily if they focus on the prize, but they may not have enough turns for that. So if they draw too many cards, we're gonna just we're just gonna discard their deck with Senti Scorch. If we get a second copy, that would be great. We can actually attack with Charizard as well, but it forces us to get stuck because we only have that one bird keeper, one escape rope to retreat it. It's three energy retreat costs, so that means the ability doesn't work for the retreat. You have to discard all energies after using the attack, so you're stuck after that. You're completely stuck after Charizard do Fire Blast. I think it's called Fire Blast. Okay, let's knock it out and then hopefully draw something useful. Lure Mobile would be so cool though, but I didn't think of that while I was building this deck. I thought about it but a bit too late while I was recording the deck review so I always record the game first before the deck review so that we get to upload basically show you guys give you guys the best version of the list right the best list of this entire deck of this the best build of this combo is the one that we just reviewed in the very beginning of this video and I have to do that part you know at just before uploading the video i can't actually do it before the recording i have to record the game first and then do the deck review after and then ed edit edit the version edit the entire video so that you actually get to see it at the beginning <clears throat> so i thought of i thought of lure mobile a bit too late that would be so cool though to see it just because it's a um, Pokemon Go card. We actually thought of Blanche as well. Blanche 
for that extra fire energy from the discard pile. If you play it, you get to draw two cards, flip a coin. If you get a hit, you get to attach a fire energy from your discard pile to one of your bench. So Blanche would be quite interesting to see, but it's only two cards and we decided finally to just scrap the Blanche from the deck and add something else like a Marnie, an extra research, whatever. Kamado even. Kamado helps you discard your fire. I don't think we have a Kamado for this deck. I'm kind of confusing this deck with the other one that I'm building at the same time. So I'm trying to post two decks at the same time, but it's really difficult. I don't think we have a Kamado for this deck. Sorry guys, we have a Bruno. Uh, we definitely don't have a Kamado. We have our Ultra Ball, uh, Quick Ball for the discard. We have our Greninja, right? We have our Greninja to discard our energies. But in case that Greninja got prized, we don't have a Hisuian Heavy Ball for this deck. So that's the bad thing for this deck is that we need to summon a lot of cards into the game. That's why we need a lot of VIP, Quick Ball, Level Ball, Ultra Ball. We need a lot of ways to bench fast so that we get our ability in the game early so that actually saves no room. That means we have no room for that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Although it may be wiser to swap maybe one Quick Ball for a Hisui Ball. I don't know. You'll just have to test it yourself. Just test it yourself and let me know. <laughs> but Lure Mobile, I would do like one less level ball for a Lure Mobile. Because if you do it too early, your opponent can actually do a Marnie to reverse the effect. So Lure Mobile to help you draw your Pokemon cards into your hand. But also it forces your opponent to draw the Pokemon card at the top 3 cards of your deck into their hand. That means if you do it just before your 100 foot flames, you could be forcing them to deck out as well. So if they have for example like 13 cards left in the deck, you have 5 energy attached to your Ascendi Scorch, you can actually do a lure mobile if they have all 3, well if they have for example 11, let's let's say they have 11, 11 cards left in the deck and then 5 energies on your Ascendi Scorch, you can actually do lure mobile to force them to draw at least 1 card from the top 3 of their deck. If it's a Pokemon, they have to draw it, they have no choice. And then do your 100 foot flames to discard the remaining 10 cards from the deck right after they drew that one card. So that actually helps you deck them out in a single turn. So if you get your lure mobile fast, don't use it, just save it for later. Uh, do your Marnie Bruno to put it back inside the deck, something like that. So Orangu is going to get rotated, Primate Wisdom is going to be no more. That card is really, it's a very good counter against a uh, research discard. If you play a re if you play like four solid copies of research in your deck, it's always good to have a Oranguru just to support. Because if you have like your stage two or your VMAX, too many copies of your VMAX in your hand, you could actually swap it with the top card of your deck and then research to draw it back into your hand. Otherwise, you would be required to play a rod. If you don't have a rod in your deck, you are screwed because you can't afford to discard all of your VMAXs. You can't afford to discard all of your stage two. And you can't draw cards that way. If you can't discard, you can't draw, you're completely screwed. And we actually did a Raihan, um, I think we did Bird Keeper, my bad. So we did a Magma Basin attached from the hand and Bird Keeper for extra 2 energies and we got 16 discards. We got 16 discards with our 100 foot flames winning the game against Arcus, uh, against Dial um, Darkrai V-Star, sorry guys, Darkrai V-Star and Moltres. Okay, now we're up against Halo Austin. I think it's a Mew VMAX deck. I have no idea. I don't think we faced the Mew VMAX. Mew VMAX is actually pretty difficult because they got Psychic Leap. Psychic Leap actually allows them to sort of replenish their deck. Um, and they can do a one-hit knockout against Entei. So I don't think we have a good chance against Mew too, against Mew VMAX. Because one hit is all they need with Choice Belt, Elisa. They don't even need a Power Tablet if they do Elisa. And it's a Pikachu, a flying Pikachu, very annoying deck. So we can't attack with a basic if they do Max Balloon. We have only our Charizard and Sandy Scorch to do damage and we can't be putting those cards in the active spot just because we want to be um, keeping them safe until we get to do the 100 foot flames at the last minute. 
so we cannot afford to play those attacks that many times we can obviously you have to do it if you have no choice might as well just do it um, you may still stand a good chance at winning if you are smart enough to navigate around uh, the issue whatever the circumstances there's always a way around it um, unless you know sometimes there isn't sometimes there's just no way you can win the game and might as well just concede so it always depends on not just your skill but I would say more, more it depends mostly on luck it actually depends more on your luck than your skill I don't know why it, it actually works that way but if you ask me it's just my opinion but it's just I believe it's that way I believe it works in favor of people who are I don't know who have their lucky star with them I don't have my lucky star with me all the time so if I have a bad hand I completely shit myself and lose the game <laughs> not always though there is always uh, there is some games where you are able to come back strong there are some games where you you know uh, very rare but you get to basically turn the tables with a Marnie or like by with a boss if your opponent gets stuck late stage in a game it's still possible for you to win okay here comes the flaffy i think they're doing a cheryl flaffy combo um cheryl flaffy would be quite insane static shock let's hope we don't get paralyzed we have that one escape book in our hand and it just got marnie oh my goodness oh well they got 38 cards left in the deck um that's a lot that's way too much. We got another basin in our hand. Okay, we should be good. Tails, tails, tails. Yes. Oh my god, they get to flip another time. Oh my goodness, it's a hit. Oh my goodness, Glim would tangle. We got paralyzed, guys. Okay, we're gonna do conceal cards. Research. We don't need Charmeleon anymore, I don't think. So let's just incense for Charmeleon and then research discard it. I don't know what's the best practice here. Um, so if you have too many energies discarded already, make sure you attach from your hand any fighting energies. Unless if you want to draw more cards with your Greninja, then just go for it. Uh, we have no training card to retrieve those energies. Okay, right now we are doing Fleet Foot. We got our Charizard in the game at long last, but we got paralyzed again, I think. Was it our first time or was it the second time? I don't know. I think it was the first time. So we couldn't attack um, thanks to the paralysis and they actually did a Cynthia, I think, this turn. I'm not sure what they played though. Either Cynthia or Bruno. Okay, they, 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 they did a Marnie actually. They keep playing Marnie though. Marnie is so annoying. We got so many support cards in our hand and now they're all gone. In the span of a single turn, all your support cards are dis just disappear. Okay, we're just gonna knock out the active right now. And then keep on attaching to our Sandy Scorch. We got 5 energy in the game right now, that's delicious. We're just gonna slowly invest as much as we can onto the Sandy Scorch. I don't think we should be discarding the Bird Keeper because we could be using it for an extra energy later. Because I don't think we have a cast form. So no cast form means that we actually need to play the Bird Keeper just for Basin to get, get us an extra energy. So experience share for one, basin for one, uh, attach from the hand for another. And if we can't play a Raihan, if we are forced to play a Bird Keeper, that's why cast form is so good. 
because it allows you to play Raihan, which is an extra two discard. So you get to do uh, additional eight discards. If you have uh, four energy already attached, three at least three energy attached already, you get to do fourteen discards. And if your opponent play decks like uh, Darkrai V Star that you know draws a lot of cards from the deck, even Dialga V Star. Uh, Dialga V Star with you know the item the Turbo Dialga with Mew, Cross Switcher, Metal Saucer, nothing but Dialga V Star, no Bronzong, no Zashin. If they play that, they actually need to run through their deck and draw out a lot of cards. They need to use up the items, the Ultra Ball, Greninja to draw even more cards. So they are drawing every single turn with Tracking Shoes as well, and that actually helps us. Reggie Gas actually we stand a pretty good chance. So up against Reggie Gigas, all we need to do is kill the Reggie Eyes. Because if they play a choice belt with the Reggie Eyes, they can actually kill us with one hit. Uh, so always watch out for Reggie Eyes. But I don't think it's smart to play Entei. We don't have any other attackers though. And we only have two copies of the Charmander and Senti Scorch. So I don't think we have a choice about to play Entei. And no choice belt means... 230 damage, sorry, 260 damage with the Ice Rider, with the Reggie Ice, is enough to knock out Entei with one hit. And that's actually pretty bad because if they kill two with two strikes, they just need three turns, sorry, four turns to collect all six prizes. And four turns is not a lot. Because by their fourth, if we are not doing a knockout, they don't need to draw any more cards, right? So if we do a knockout, we actually have to bench another Entei. And that means they need only three turns to win the game. And they got rods in their deck as well. So if they have like 15 cards remaining, I mean, it would be quite impossible. If they have 10 cards remaining in the deck and we have, and you know, we have one prize on our opponent's end, we can actually do Sandy Scorch at the last minute to discard 10. So we actually got a lot of discard this turn and we got another Senti Scorch on the bench so this game was quite delicious because we get to do so many discards we get to do 100 foot flames twice we got experience share attached to both and we actually are playing three copies of experience share for this list so this is a bit of a different list we have three experience shares no cast form and um well obviously one bird keeper only two Entei's I think so eventually I decided on playing three Entei just because I don't know it really helps out with the you know to start the game off because if you get a bad start there's just no chance of winning so that is the end of the game already we got no basin but we got enough for the discard so we did a full 10 discard on the last turn and now we're doing 8 discards and had they not drawn anything on their last turn, they still would not be able to avoid the deck out. So we won against a Pikachu, a flying Pikachu VMAX because we can't actually damage the uh, we can't actually damage the VMAX at all with our Entei because it is a basic Pokemon. So Entei is doing 0 damage to the Pikachu unless if we do a boss or escape rope and we actually don't have an escape rope for the final list uh, I eventually decided to cut escape rope from the list and added a uh, cast form instead because I just really love cast form cast form is a fire type is a free retreat pokemon it's just really fun to play I love cast form we have one bird keeper though for the extra switch uh, effect so right now we're up against a Zorok stage 1 box Playing Chinchino for the draw. We got the standard Galisa pod, Flapple. We got even the one price Moltres. Okay, we're gonna level ball for our Charmander. Oh, we already have a Charmander, my bad. Level ball for a uh, Sizzly P. So, level ball helps you get your one price basic, it helps you evolve your Charmeleon. That's why we are playing one copy in this deck. We have three VIP pass, four quick ball, and only three, two ultra ball. So a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A total of nine cards to summon our Entei, 
but we do have three copies of that card so i don't think it's that difficult to bench it from the start since playing three copies of that basic means we are very likely to get it as our first active anyways in our first hand because we have only two charmander two sizzlypede and one copy of the other cards Manaphy, greninja i don't think we have anything else we don't have a crobat do we have a crobat i don't think so so no crobat no luminion nothing but fire pokemons and that one Manaphy. one cast form right forgot about cast form so Entei has the highest copy and that means we are you know we are trying to make it as likely as possible for us to top deck sorry for us to get it as our first starting pokemon and we actually drew another basin look at that this is a really bad hand right here we got four basins and a research in our hand plus a rare candy and a rock we're gonna have to discard all the things that we need for later and that actually forces us to keep our hand we're not able to play the research unless if we do the basin right now i really don't want to though i'm waiting for that marnie or bruno or something to just give us a better hand so it, it appears they're playing altaria um they got altaria for the miraculous charm and that actually helps them um you know wall against our v card i suppose we got our searing flame to kill the altaria with senti scorch we can still do damage with that with that card we can attack with um flaring something charizard can attack but it does only 170 damage for four energies that means you need to attach two uh, with the ability activated, you only need to attach two, but you have to discard all energies after playing that attack and Then you get stuck if you don't switch you're stuck because it has three energy which you cost if you don't play an air balloon scuba net You're kind of stuck in the active So that is the bad thing about Charizard it cannot actually attack if you attack you better be using it as your final attacker because um, otherwise you're gonna get bossed on the next turn if you have a V card on your bench like a Crobat, Luminion, and you, if you attack the turn, if you pass the turn attacking with Charizard, they're gonna just collect the final two prize or extra prizes with their uh, Luminion boss or cross switcher, Pokemon catcher. Pokemon catcher is still in the game, pretty annoying. Um, there's no other catchers but toy catcher. There used to be a counter catcher and great catcher. Now there's no V catcher. Like, there should be a. Um, what does V stand for? I don't know. GX stands for Great Exalted or whatever. I don't even know what GX stands for. Um, v stands for Evolution, I think. Vice Catcher. I don't know. I don't know what V stands for. So, right now, they have three chinchinos well two and as a rock on the next turn they can transform into anything and altaria actually has one energy retreat the dragon one the one from evolving skies with the supporter search you actually get to search your deck for your supporter card and put it at the top deck instead of putting it into your hand that altaria has zero retreat and that altaria is super cool because you get to um, use the ability to support your Pokemon, but also you get to, you know, basically have your Pokemon on the bench for Marnie's Pride, for Magma Basin, um, passing the turn, and then retreat at just the right time to do an attack. So free retreat Pokemons are very, very cool. I just love them just because you can use cards like Basin. It helps you play Marnie's Pride. Um, Bay, it helps you play Bay, BD, stuff like that. Things that only allows you to attach to your bench Pokemon. Even your Blanche, uh, all the new supporter from Pokemon Go set that allows you to attach your Fire, Lightning, or Water Energy from the discard pile if you flip a heads to one of your bench Pokemon. And Gutsy Pickaxe only allows you to attach to your bench as well, I think. So Gutsy is not really that, um, not really that powerful if you ask me.
Okay, we got our Ultra Ball, but we're just gonna do Zinnia right here. We're just gonna Zinnia for a solid 6 draw. Probably gonna get an energy. There we go. We got our Rare Candy and Stage 2 PR Evolution. We don't need the Ultra Ball. We're just gonna attach that one energy to Santi Scorch, draw two cards with our Greninja, and then Magma Basin for the third. Now, passing the turn, we have three on Santi Scorch. If they knock out Entei, we got four on the next turn. So I'm thinking if we should be benching the cast form right now. We actually do have a cast form for this list. Um, we haven't yet drawn with Fleetfoot. So never forget your Fleetfoot. Sometimes it's better to do the ability first because drawing that one card could help you do Ultra Ball. So sometimes it's better to Fleetfoot first. Sometimes it's just better to Fleetfoot after the Marnie, after the research. like. It really depends on the game. It de depends on like how lucky you are as well, but mostly depends on the game. Like, you know, the situation at hand. And we actually did a discard early because we know they're going to play a Marnie or something like that, but I don't know if that's wise though. Because we can't actually hit the Altaria, so it kind of makes sense, right? Kind of makes sense for us to do this right now. They got a Zorug on the bench though. That was quite kind of a big mistake. Because now they're gonna transform. Now they're gonna knock us out. And Senti Scorch is no more. We got a second one on the bench, but I don't think we can discard fast enough on the next turn. We need a few more turns to basically dis deck them out. So we got no cast form. We can't do the basin and retreat. We only got two energies on the next turn on the Sandy Scorch with our Raihan, and that's only four discard, which is not enough. We can actually do Searing Flame to kill the Flapple. I thought it was a Belisa Pod, but it turns out to be a Flapple. Well, whatever they use is gonna die. Belisa Pod does 50x for each uh, V cards your opponent has in play. I think it does like a 20 or 30 base damage as well. So we're gonna just stall with Entei and see what happens. Let's play a Raihan and then possibly get an escape rope. If we have an escape oh we don't have an escape rope my bad. So this list is the final version. We don't have escape rope. We have one bird keeper. So I'm just gonna prepare for the next turn. We're just gonna get a supporter card to guarantee us a better hand. Because right now, our hand is looking quite sucky. Let's just get... We can't play Amarni though. So that was a misplay. We made a mistake uh, without realizing we got Amarni. Because they actually have a big hand. And playing Amarni would actually save their deck. Putting those cards back into the deck. And, you know, Santi Scorch doesn't actually do a deck out. So make sure you don't do Amarni at the wrong time. Because you could be helping your opponent and, you know, countering your own strategy. We don't want to be doing that. So let's just kill the Flapple because it can do a lot of damage. Having four cards with ability in play, they get to do 200 damage with that card. Choice Belt and we're dead. Okay, no Zorok on the bench, no Flapple, nothing. So we're good for one turn, one entire turn. We got no experience share, but I don't think we need it. We're just going to base in and then if we get an energy from the deck, well, we can't draw anything because we got a Marnie. We can't play a Marnie, we can't draw anything. Oh, we got one draw for Entei, my bad. So we got nothing. Let's just attach the experience share. And we can't retreat this turn, but we got three energies on Sensei Scorch. We got a solid six discard on the next turn. Unless if they do a boss on a Sandy Scorch. So it really comes down to do they have that boss? If they do, they may just play Chinchino for the boss. And that actually means they may, they may not have enough turns. Or enough evolutions, enough cards left, enough Zorox left. They may just play a Rod to recycle the Zorok though. So I have no idea what they're going to do. Chinchino is gonna help us deck them out because they're drawing so many cards into their deck. They're discarding one from their hand as well. So let's see what they're gonna do. What is their game plan? And they just conceded though. Okay, they conceded. We won a game against Zorok. Um, Chinchino. 
I don't know what happened there. I don't think they have a boss anymore. Maybe they used it up already. So no boss means Sandy Scorch gets through the mill. And they are dead. Sandy Scorch is so cool though. I love that attack so much. I've been uh, trying to make a deck from this card for so long. It just doesn't work. I tried Floor Jazz, guys. I tried Floor Jazz for uh, the Rapid Strike Sizzlypede. So Rapid Strike Sizzlypede and then play your Blissey. And then Mustard for a Floor Jazz. Transfer all the fire energy uh, from the discard pile attached to the Blissey with Blissful Blast. Transfer from Blissey onto your Sizzlypede. Rapid Strike Sizzlypede. And then evolve into the non Rapid Strike uh, Senti Scorch with the 100 foot flames. And then after that, you just need to switch from the Blissey to your Senti Scorch. Do a crazy mill with that. I'm not sure if you can add a Charizard for that list. But that doesn't work though. You can't actually fit in enough fire energy into that deck. But if you put Charizard, it may actually help out because Charizard helps you, um, you know, it helps you double the amount of discards that you're doing. But that means you don't need that much energy anymore. But you actually have to wait one turn though. You have to bench a Sizzlipede. You have to attack and pass the turn. That means if your opponent boss your, it's kind of the same as your Entei, right? Because if they boss your Entei, um, they're gonna have to deal with Blissey. Sorry, if they boss a Senti Scorch, they're gonna have to deal with Blissey. If they try to kill your Blissey, they're gonna have to deal with the Senti Scorch mill later on. So it's officially the same thing, essentially. Not officially. Okay. And I don't think we have the space for Mustard though. Mustard Floor Jazz is a bit difficult. We need to play the Stage 2. The stage one, we need the Blissey support. Blissey support is a lot. Blissey requires a lot of support. You know, you need your heal cards, you need your, you may not require your heal cards. You need your switch cards, right? You need a lot of switches and you need a lot of uh, keep of toughness. If you don't play that card, Blissey cannot survive a turn. I think this is kind of the same as a Blissey deck. And if you do a Blissey, you can't do Magma Basin, so. Because you're gonna probably end up having no no more energies inside the deck. Sorry, no more energies in your discard pile for your bench Pokemon. Because you can't afford to add that many, right? If you have too many energy cards in your deck, like you can't play that many copies of Blissey anymore. So I would love to add Cape of Toughness to this list. Because Entei gets to survive much longer. And then we would be able to wait, drag the game out even more until at the last final, uh, at the last minute, like turn 11 or turn 20 even, pull out that Santi Scorch for the final mill. So that they actually played Egg Incubator. There we go. Egg Incubator from Pokemon Go. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon and bench it directly. If you flip a Tails though, you have to put it at the bottom of your deck. A very, very fun card to play. Very interesting. I love the name as well. Egg Incubator. Nice concept. Cloak in Shadows. That's the promo Shadow Rider. So they're playing Arceus with Shadow. Arceus doesn't actually work that well with just any VMAX. If you just mix it with any VMAX, it's not going to work that well, honestly. Because even with Rayquaza, if you do nothing but Rayquaza, it's probably going to work better than Arceus Rayquaza. The only plus side is that it helps you get the fire energy for Rayquaza. Uh, for Shadow, it helps you get extra 3 energies. If your opponent doesn't knock out the Arceus, then you got an extra 1 Psychic in play, I suppose. It's, it's not really doing too much though. I mean, why don't you just play nothing but Shadow? I suppose it, it helps out with the weakness if they are playing dark type. You get to tank with your Arceus, you get to knock out their dark Pokemon with Arceus. And then, you know, once you have enough energies in play, you get to do a one-hit knockout with your Shadow. And you don't need to worry about the weakness anymore. Because you are killing their Pokemon with one hit, they are killing your Pokemon with one hit. So it kind of makes sense against certain matchups. Obviously, every deck has its own strength. Um, this one is kind of targeting those darkness deck, I suppose. I don't really know. 
Because they even have a lucky energy. Like, it's a very weird deck. They got a lucky energy for the shadow. And they're not even using it to attack just yet. Okay, they got five energies, five psychic energy in play. That's 160 damage. 180, sorry, 190 with the choice belt. And they played two catchers to pull out the Sizzly Peed. <sighs> and it was a big surprise. Like, they actually did nothing, though. Spoiler alert, but. I don't really care. Spoiler alert, they did nothing. They just catched our Sizzlypede and decided not to retreat, knock it out. Because if they retreat, um, they got Starbirth though. They haven't used their Starbirth yet. They could actually search for a Switch card. They may already have discarded it, I don't know. But pretty sure they have a Switch card, right? So if they retreat, they're going to have to discard those two energies. And they, I don't think they can afford to do that. Because they're only doing 100 damage after that. 100 is enough to kill the Sizzly P though. I mean, we have a experience share attached to it, it's a basic, we've got one energy. They should really be killing that off because they got 19 cards left in the deck and they're just not bothered to do anything about it. So we're gonna evolve right now and attach one from the basin. Let's do experience share on the Charizard. Let's just play our rod later. Because I'm pretty sure we have another Sizzly Pete inside the deck. We got a rare candy. We got no extra Charmander. So there's no Charmander on the bench. If they boss the Charizard, we're kind of screwed. Not completely, but kind of screwed. Acerulus Premonition. Okay, um, Shadow Rider, come on, why are they taking so long? Starbirth, they finally used that, Starbirth. Okay, now we just need to watch out for Marnie, because if they do Marnie, all those cards are back, and they got, you know, we need way more discards to kill them. So no choice belt, which is pretty sad. They attached the choice belt to Crobat. I have no idea why. I think they wanted to draw more cards with like uh, Cynthia or Karina. I don't know. So we got eight discards this turn. Um, almost enough, but not quite. So we're just gonna attack. We're just gonna kill the Arceus. And then see what we can do later. They could quite easily boss the Charizard, so let's just get a Charmander right now. I mean, we should be thinking about the next one so that we get to rod back the Charizard and then Rare Candy evolve it. We actually discarded a Rare Candy, or we got another Rare Candy in our, in our hand. So we got a Sizzlypede instead of the Charizard, which is a bit silly. But if they boss the Senti Scorch, we're kind of screwed if we bench another Charmander. So if we bench the Sizzly Pete, they're gonna target the Charizard. If we bench a Charmander, they're gonna target the Sizzly Pete. Um, there really is no counter. You kind of need both in play. You need two Senti Scorch and two Charizard in play. So that if they boss one or the other, you're still good to go. Um, or like the basic, you know, and then evolve on the next turn. And then one cast form actually eats the space. That means you don't have the space for Entei, but that's okay because you can bench Entei at the last minute. You can bench Entei on your turn and then retreat with cast form, attach one energy from your hand. That, that's good enough for you to attack. That's enough for Entei to do Burning Rondo. So you don't need a lot. So it's always better to have that perfect bench, which is two Sizzlypede, two Charmander, and one cast form. One Entei to attack. Um, obviously, you know, the evolve one copy of the Charizard evolved and one Senti Scorch evolved as well. Okay, they drew even more cards with their Underworld Door, but they may be trying to get their Marnie out. If they got their Marnie this turn, we are kind of screwed. Um, they got Hatterene, Hatterene V from Champion's Path. Really cool card. If your opponent is confused, you gotta do 180 damage. 
Not a lot though, I mean... I tried that... I tried building a deck with Butterfree, Hetarine with Butterfree and Zacian from Celebrations. A very fun deck to play, certainly. Not a lot of people, uh, you know, not a lot of people watch that video, but it was a lot of fun actually, because you get to do um, Poison Burn Confuse, and then you get to ch add Choice Belt for that extra 30 damage, and then Poison Burn is another 3 damage counter, so you're essentially doing 180 plus 60, that's 240 damage, killing any V cards, any V basics across the board, except for Blissey. Except for Blissey. And Blissey got Natural Cure, so we can't actually deal with Blissey with our Hatterene. But we can confuse them though, on the next turn. So we actually milled them, discarded the final 5 cards from the deck before they get to play Amarni, and we won the game. So I think I'm just going to end the voiceover right here and leave you guys to focus on the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this one today. We are featuring the new uh, Pokemon Go set, the new Charizard from Pokemon Go. Hope you guys enjoyed this combo with our Senti Scorch and Entei V. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye for now, lovely people. Enjoy your life.